Hello my friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I would do a little bit of a sit down video just to give you a little update on how I'm feeling after handing in my thesis and half completing my PhD I guess and also to give you an update on my new job and how I'm getting on with that. So you may or may not notice during the video a little dog which is on my lap popping up to say hello so you can just ignore him. I am looking after my mum and dad's dog and he is quite needy and likes to just be close so he is currently falling asleep on my lap just now. Say hello! Say hello! Yes! Mwah. So he's gonna have a sleep and we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of how I'm feeling and how my new job is going. So first of all I wanted to start with how I'm feeling since handing in my thesis. So I handed in my PhD thesis at the end of February which was a month ago now um, so I've worked four weeks at my job already, which is actually quite scary. And being completely honest, since I handed in my thesis, I have felt like a completely different person. <laughs> Even though I'm not 100% finished yet, I still feel like a lot of the stress has been released from me and my energy has returned and Honestly, I just feel like I have been given this new lease of life, which I haven't seen for the last three and a half years. It's crazy because I didn't really feel like my PhD affected me that much while I was doing it, but noticing the contrast in myself now that I've finished, it's actually quite extreme because I didn't really think about how little energy I had whilst doing my PhD. Honestly, most of the time I would be in the lab, I would be running about, it would be physically demanding and also mentally demanding because you know you're constantly using your brain to solve problems that you've encountered that day and to you know for writing which requires a lot of brain power also and now that things are at a lot slower pace because I'm starting my new job I've just realized how much more energy I have and how normal people with normal jobs must live with this amount of energy and it's really really strange. When you're doing a PhD it, it feels like you have the weight of the world on your shoulders, you know, you're juggling so many different things, you're constantly, you know, fighting your internal mind that's telling you that you're not good enough or you're constantly comparing yourself to other people and you always feel like you have something to prove and that proving yourself doesn't really finish until you've got that title of doctor and you've completed everything. So it's a lot of pressure that you have <laughs> during those years. You know, sometimes you might have pressure from family, sometimes you might have pressure from your supervisor. And in my case, that wasn't the case. It was just the pressure I was putting on myself. Pressure to finish the PhD on time, pressure to finish it to a high standard, pressure to publish papers. And I think while you're doing it, it's just kind of like, well, this is what I've got to do, so let's just get it done. But I've had some time to reflect now, and now that I feel more energized and less stressed, I just realized that this pressure has just been released from me. Yeah, it just feels amazing to be honest. So it's very fair to say that I am enjoying the slower pace that I have at my job just now. I'm not running around the lab doing a million things. I'm still getting trained up. It's like when you start your PhD and you're just kind of finding your feet and hopefully for the rest of my job it's going to stay similar. Of course there will be very busy periods and there will be slower periods but I don't know, I feel like working life is just so so different than when you're doing a PhD. I'm also enjoying this new energy that I have and also this new level of happiness that I have. It's quite sad to have to say this but I really don't feel like I was 100% myself and 100% happy while doing my PhD. Again because I'm comparing how I felt and my happiness levels during my PhD to how I feel now and it's just totally different. Again that will just be to do with all of the factors of having this pressure, having that deadline, constantly feeling like I'm not doing enough, constantly feeling like I'm not good enough and now that I've handed in the thesis and my supervisor has said that it's good enough to get a PhD, now I feel like I can breathe. It's a really weird thing like I'm trying to explain this whole change in mindset and change in energy and change in happiness levels. But even though I'm trying to find reasons, I feel like the main reason is purely because my PhD has finished. I don't know, it's, it's a difficult one to explain, but until you've experienced doing a PhD, finishing your PhD and then starting a real job, then 
you can never understand <laughs> how good it feels once you're done. So I've not completely finished yet because I do have my Viva in the middle of April. It's actually in two weeks time, which is very, very scary. I am feeling nervous for it just because I don't know what they're going to ask me and I don't know what level of detail they're going to go into. And I haven't started studying yet. I'm kind of feeling a bit anxious about even opening my thesis, to be honest, but I'm going to start today. I'm going to start by reading a chapter at a time, making some notes on some questions that they might ask me. And yeah, this week I have started to feel quite anxious about it. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure it will be fine. And I've heard it's quite difficult to fail your Viva unless you literally didn't write your thesis. And I think I do know my stuff and I did write my thesis after all. I did do my PhD, but yeah, I'm, I would be lying if I said that I wasn't nervous and I wasn't feeling anxious for it. I think once the Viva is done, then I will feel 100% relieved, 100% stress-free. But I guess at the moment I'm sitting at like 80% stress-free and 80% relieved because of course it's not 100% over yet, but fingers crossed everything goes well with the Viva. Okay, enough PhD chat because if I think about my Viva too much, I will start to get very stressed. <laughs> so I want to just update you all on how the job is going, how I'm feeling and what I've been up to during my first month at my new job. So if you missed one of my previous videos where I made an announcement about my new job and what I'm going to be doing in my new job, I am a research scientist now at a research institute and I've actually switched fields from natural products chemistry into environmental chemistry slash analytical chemistry. And I'm an analytical chemist, but my title is also research scientist. So I tend to kind of go between the both. The main role of my job is to become an expert in running the LC triple quad MS. So it's an LCMS system that uses a triple quad detector. And we use this for analyzing contaminants in different environmental samples. So currently we have quite a lot of projects going on. Uh, some are Scottish government funded and the main contaminants that we are looking at are different pharmaceuticals, antibiotics, also pesticides, amongst other emerging contaminants, which are beginning to be found in different environmental samples. So I use the LC triple quad MS to quantify the amount of contaminants in these samples. And during my PhD, I did have experience running LCMS, but it was a completely different type of system and a different brand of system also. So I've had to get used to this new system and the new brands because the softwares are quite different, but at least the principles are exactly the same. So yes, I am expected to kind of become the user, the main user of this instrument, the person who is the expert. And so far I've been running lots of samples which were already prepared before I arrived at the Institute. So there was a bit of a backlog of samples because the last person who was doing my role, they left in December and then I didn't start until March. So there was a few months where the samples weren't getting analyzed. So that's what I've mainly been working on at the moment but that's not going to be my role to just, you know, routinely run samples on the instrument. In the future, when we get new projects to quantify new contaminants or different contaminants than the ones we're already studying, I will be the person who will have to develop the methods. So I will develop the HPLC methods. I will develop the mass spec methods for detecting these contaminants. Also extraction methods. So how are we going to extract these compounds from whatever environmental samples we're looking at? So again, very similar to my PhD where I was trying to extract compounds from marine invertebrates, but now I am trying to extract compounds from environmental samples and there are specific compounds we're looking for rather than with my PhD doing natural products work. I didn't know what I was looking for and I was just trying to extract and isolate new compounds. So there is quite a bit of similarity between my PhD work and my current work. The techniques are quite similar. So I'm still using SPE, uh, liquid liquid extractions, column chromatography. So it's all quite similar, but the applications are just different. So that kind of goes to show that what you're studying in your PhD, it's more important about the skills 
that you gain rather than the exact topic that you're studying because like I say this the topic I was studying in my PhD is very different from what I am working on now. So I haven't had the chance yet to actually look at the extraction methods and to actually extract the compounds from our samples because like I say I've just been running the samples and getting used to the instruments but I think soon I will be learning those methods um, and seeing how those methods were set up and why. It's really nice as well because even though I've only been there for a month, I am beginning to piece together all of the projects and what they're actually about because I'm involved in quite a few different projects and the projects are quite different from a PhD project because the projects we work on are these big work packages. So it will be a huge funded project which involves so many different departments and there's so many different sections of the project and the funding is for this whole big work package including all of these mini projects within this big project if that makes sense. So it's quite different because there's so many people involved in the project and there's so many different kind of sub projects within the big project so it makes it really interesting and of course we're all working towards kind of one main goal and we're trying to answer the same question by just doing lots of different techniques and investigating lots of different samples and yeah I don't know if I explained that very well but it's completely different from a PhD project. I'm involved in lots of projects and these projects are part of bigger projects. So an exciting little update is that I am also going to my first conference in June, which is very exciting. I am actually putting forward an abstract to either present or to do a poster. So I have been looking at some old past data and trying to familiarize myself with it and trying to find trends and trying to come up with something for writing an abstract. So that's been really fun. And it's been quite a challenge because I've had to really familiarize myself with the work that we're doing and why we're doing it, reading papers, papers which have been produced by the lab and studying the data and seeing how in the paper they present the data. So that's actually been really helpful in helping me to familiarize myself with the projects and why we're doing it and how to process the data and how to present the data. So yeah, the conference will be really good and it will be good to find out who else is in the field because this is not my field for my PhD and there'll be lots of different people doing lots of different things so I should be able to learn a lot. If I can give you any advice uh, for a PhD or for a postdoc if you're going to be doing it in a different area is try and find a conference early on in your field because it will help you to pick up on what's going on in the field and help to just give you a bit of a taste of the different research areas and the people that are working in the field, people that might be useful for collaborating with later on in your projects. So that's why I wanted to go to this conference so early on because it would just be so beneficial. I'll find out who the key people are in the field and I'll find the key topics of research in my field as well, which might give me inspiration for um, applying for funding for future projects within my role as well. Yeah, that's something I didn't mention. So I did mention in my previous video, but my role is a tenure track position, which means that I have the role for three years and then after the three years, my performance will be reviewed and they will decide whether I am kept as permanent or, or not. So it's different from a postdoc position where you have a contract usually for a set amount of years or a set amount of months and that's just for that specific project so it's great that I have the opportunity that I can be kept on after my first three years but with that it means that I need to apply for funding and I need to come up with ideas for projects in order to get the funding which is really fun because I've already started to think of ideas for future projects I need to try and not get ahead of myself but yeah, it's great that I still have that creative freedom like I did with my PhD. Yes, it's a little bit of pressure because I'm going to need to apply for funding from these funding bodies, but it's really exciting. and I'm super excited, probably between six months and one year's time to start applying for grants and to see what happens. So the last thing I'd like to mention is just my work schedule. Mainly I'm working 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon or 5 o'clock. My contract just states that I need to work 37 hours and I'm actually self-managed. So that means that I self-manage my own hours. I don't have a, a strict start time and end time. I just need to make sure the work is done and make sure that I fulfill my working hours for the week. So with that, that means that I, I tend to work a little bit later most days, 
which then means that I can leave earlier on a Friday, which is fantastic. I also get the opportunity to work from home if I need to. I haven't really done that since I've started. I need to get a new monitor because I don't have one at the moment uh, for my house. And then it'll be a bit more comfortable to work from home rather than just working on my laptop. But I've been in the lab a lot at the moment anyway, so there's not really been any reason for me to work from home. But it's good that it's flexible and the option is there if I need to use it, which is really, really great. So as you might be able to tell, I am very much enjoying my job. I am very much enjoying being PhD thesis free. Yes, I have my Viva coming up, but it's so great to know that the PhD journey is almost over. I just want to clarify that I didn't have a negative experience during my PhD, but like I mentioned before, I think I'm just realizing now how much stress I was actually under during my PhD. So that's why I am glad that it is finished. But if I had the choice to do it all over again or to not do it, I would 100% do it because I learned so much about myself. I grew so much as an independent researcher and yeah, what an achievement to manage to say that you've done a PhD. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little update about what's been going on with me, how I've been feeling since handing in my thesis. And if you have any questions about something I didn't cover during this video, please just leave them in the comments section below and I will happily answer your questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Say bye. <laughs>